What's up, everybody? This is John from Coding Addict, and welcome to another JavaScript challenge video. And today we're going to create a function that returns how many days between the two dates. Since JavaScript dates are always somewhat messy, I think it's going to serve us as a good practice. Before we start, though, let me just mention that since I've been getting a bunch of great inputs, I have started to add them to the source code. So if you follow the source code link I left in the description, you might see some other nifty solutions as well. And with that said, let's get cracking. And my initial setup is following where I have two variables, both set up with JavaScript constructor. And here I just pass in May 27th of 2021. And then of course, you can see the second date as well. And I guess let's just start by setting up the function. And I think I'm going to go with arrow function, we'll call this get days. And as far as the parameters, not going to be original, I'll use the same values, date one, and date two. And we won't worry about the logic for now. I simply want to invoke it. But since we'll be returning a value, you might as well go with get days and right away jam it into the console log. And we'll pass in date one and date two. Let's save this one. And let's just start by taking a look what we get back as a value. So if I go with console log and then date number one, and date number two, this is what we get by default. So this is what the constructor returns. And of course, since we want to do some operations, it would be nicer if that would be a number. And how we can turn date into the number? Well, we can turn it into the milliseconds. And we can do that since every instance that we get back from the constructor actually has the method by the name of get time. In here, let's create a new variable. I'll call this time two is equal to date two. And the method name is get time. And we'll invoke it. And I'll write away console log. So in here, I can see time number two. So I'll remove the date one and date two console log, just so it's not that busy. And here you go. Now, of course, we have the value in a milliseconds. So it's the same date, just in a milliseconds. Now I want to do the same thing for date number one. So let's copy and paste. And let's say time one is equal to date number one. And of course, the console log as well. Now, since this date is bigger, of course, the value for the milliseconds is also going to be bigger. And then if we want to do the subtraction, well, we simply want to set up a new variable. So I'm going to go with let time is equal to time number two minus. So we're subtracting the first date from the second date, since we have now value in milliseconds, and we should get a value. So if I go here with console log, and I'll pass in time, of course, this will be the difference between the two. And I'm purposely setting this up with let and you'll see in a second why. So I have the value in milliseconds. That's awesome. How, how can I calculate the days that I have here? Well, we need to divide this value by the amount of milliseconds we have in a day. How we can calculate that? For starters, we can create a new variable, we'll call this one day, and then one second has 1000 milliseconds. Then we'll multiply this by how many seconds we have in a minute, that is 60. Then we'll multiply this by how many minutes we have in an hour, which is another 60. And then finally, we'll multiply that by how many hours we have in a day, which is 24. And once we get this value, this one day, we simply need to divide our result by this one day. And then we'll see amount of days that we have between the two dates. So let's just go here, we'll say time is equal to time divided by one day. And I guess I'll have to still console log it. So now of course, I have 739. And everything is great. However, there are two things that I want to fix. First, once in a while, you might get a decimal values. And we always want to have a round number. So effectively, we'll pipe it through the math round, the method that is on a math object. And a second thing, well, what if the second value is smaller? What if I change this to 2019? Of course, then the days value is correct. However, this is a negative number. 
and I always want to have positive numbers. So we'll use math absolute method to get always the absolute value instead of positive or negative. So let me change this around back to 2023. And since again, I created this variable with time, I can go above the console log and I'll say time is equal to math round. So first, we'll always nicely round the number to the nearest integer. And then second, we'll pass in math and then the method name is absolute and we'll pass in our time. So now, even if I change this to the smaller value, my result will always be this absolute value. And then, of course, lastly, we just want to return from the function. So say time and we're almost done. I just want to showcase how we can set this up with less lines of code. So let me comment this out. I'll use the same function name since I'm invoking it in line 23 and we'll go with const again, get days and we'll pass in date number one and date number two. Since from the arrow function, we right away implicitly return. I don't need to use the return keyword and we can simply go with math round. Then we pass in math absolute and in the math absolute, we'll pass in our calculation where we'll set up another set of parentheses. We'll say date number two minus date number one, and then we'll divide that by this value, so the thousand multiplied by 60 by 60 and then 24. So in here, let's set up another set of parentheses. And then since we know that essentially this is going to be 3600, we can simplify even more. And then I just need to remove that semicolon. And of course, the result is going to be exactly the same. And if you're wondering how we were able to get the correct result without using the get time method, well, here's another useful nugget. When a date object is converted to a number, it becomes a timestamp, same as with get time method. And since in our case, we're performing a math operation, aka subtracting, JavaScript helps us out and converts both dates into milliseconds. So that's how we can calculate how many days we have between two dates. And this is going to be the long way of setting this up. And of course, here we have the same functionality with just less lines of code.